My name is Geraldine Sangalang. I'm the co-founder of Chatty Bear Magazine. You can find Chatty Bear Magazine at chattybear.com. I'm continuing a countdown to moving overseas. I'm personally moving from Canada to Dubai. My co-founder Amit and I have been separated for nearly two years. And so he's moving from India to Dubai. In this video, I'm gonna cover three things. I'm gonna cover how I've been connecting with people, what I've been doing with my things, and then also the connection between travel and identity. The interesting thing about knowing when you're leaving, when you're relocating, is that you can plan out your time. So the thing about connecting with people is that I have between now and September to book time with people, spend time with people spontaneously, even just to give them a call and see where they're doing. Um, because in my mind, psychologically, it seems much easier to do it while I'm in Canada, even if we might be connecting virtually. Regarding spending time with people, the other thing I've been doing is inviting people into my life, spending time with like-minded people. And by like-minded people, what I really mean is I know I'm embarking on this huge adventure. I have very little frame of reference. I have no um, direct friends who can guide me through this process. The whole picture is quite fuzzy. And so this is actually a really challenging emotional week for me. And how I really get through is by listening to podcasts and watching YouTube videos, reaching out, actually messaging people to ask them questions, because these are people who have gone through what I'm hoping to go through, the positive parts. And these are also people who are willing to take a chance to do something unique that others have not done before. I know that Amit and I would have had a very different life if things had moved a bit quicker, if there was less confusion and precarious things going on in the world, but that's not the reality. So for the sake of my own mental health, I really need to hear the voices of people who have tried something like this, been successful doing it, because believe you, you or I are, I'm sure, very good at focusing on the negative, scary parts about what's going on. So if you allow yourself to hear the voices of people who are at least going through the same process, similar, or have succeeded, it'll feel much better. So be mindful of the people you surround yourself with. The final thing I've been doing regarding connecting with people is trying to create opportunities to connect with them once I'm overseas. So now that I'm sharing the message and I've made the decision that I'm going to go overseas, now I'm starting to collect not just phone numbers, but um, physical addresses and to ask them about what their plans are because I really don't know where the future will lead, of course. Maybe we'll be in Dubai for a couple of weeks and then we'll have reason to come back to Canada. Maybe we'll be in different countries every month, every couple of weeks. I really don't know. We're doing our best to make the plans that make the most sense for us. And so regardless, my intention is not to cut myself off from the people that I know and love. I still need them and, and love them and respect them. And so not only is this a time to connect with the people you know and love, but it's time to prepare for how will you communicate with them once you've left the country. Have you ever had those moments where you realize that the things that you were doing for a couple of weeks, for a couple of months, actually were leading you towards something else that you couldn't even anticipate. For me, 100%, that's been this concept of relocation. I can say absolutely without a shadow of a doubt, I did not expect that I was gonna be making this move before about March of this year. It's really just what made sense for the family. And so when I reflect on my things, it's, it's very curious because on the one hand, you're surrounded by the things that you've collected for a specific life, a way that a life will look. And so now that I'm relocating, it's the complete opposite. What I'm looking for is flexibility and utility. Certainly there are aesthetic values. I want to keep beautiful things. But on the other hand, it has made the process much easier to let go, to be completely honest. 
The main thing I've been doing is being mindful of my purchases, which is very, very important. It's not just about saying, I'm not going to spend anything, I'm trying to save or I'm trying to hold on to things. It's more about knowing that what you bring into your home now belongs to your home, it belongs to you. So as a person going through transition, I'm very mindful of if I'm bringing something into my home, I'm bringing it into this new global home where I'll be moving about and the intention is changed. Um, so that's been an interesting transition. I'll, I'll give you a good example is that the other day I was in a store, I, I was in downtown Vancouver. I'm not there very often. And I got really excited seeing these very beautiful and seemingly practical travel tools. And while in reality, I'll probably buy them, it was that moment of let's take a step back. I've seen them, I've touched them, I know I like them. Let's take a peek and see what we have at home now that I'm getting rid of so much and see if there's something similar or if it is the right purchase. Because if it's the right purchase, wonderful. If it's not, it's just adding on to my task list. The other thing I've been doing, I mentioned in a previous video that I've been donating a lot of things. I've been selling things here and there, whether it's Facebook Marketplace or a friend of a friend knew that I'm moving, so I sold some pieces. I've connected with friends who I know thrift, and so I've said, you know, come to my place, take a peek and see what you'd like. For me, I would much rather give my items to someone who would love and care for them. And I, I know that can sound how it sounds. While I can't say that I'm a minimalist and it's not necessarily my goal, what I really want is to have a tidy, organized home where I feel comfortable and safe. And so I am very selective about the items that I bring into my home. And a lot of the items that I have are things that I see as investments, something I intended to hold on to forever, or lots of gifts. And I may not keep all gifts, but the gifts that I keep are the ones that I intend to hold on to forever or are that sentimental that I've always held. So I'm so glad to have friends who are, are very excited to take over some of these things. I don't live in a massive home, but for anybody who has moved on their own, you do find that you you amass these things. Surprise, we, we need things for a time and then they're living with us. They're sort of relics of moments in our time and that's just how things tend to be. So now that I'm in this process of getting ready to go overseas, my big strategy this week has been to move items from the highest shelves that I have lower them so that they're all a uh, height where I can at least reach. And the intention is to no longer use those top shelves. Um, and I kind of see it as a way to ease myself into things uh, while really making a change. Um, I have a top shelf, uh, I guess a top space between the ceiling and my top shelf in my kitchen that I really used for storage for um, serving platters and, and things like that. Um, and the reality is you realize you know, the majority has just been living here with me. It's my roommates, which is odd, but uh, it's the truth. And so do I find them useful? No. Do I think they're beautiful? Yes. So can I let go of them? Yes, I can. So that's been my, uh, one of my challenges this week is moving all items, clothing, um, clothing, linens, kitchen items, down from the top shelves, getting rid of anything that I'm going to donate or sell, and then moving forward, I'm no longer going to use those top shelves. And so really over time, what should happen is that because I'm removing things from my home, being more intentional about things that are coming into my home, those shelves should get lower and lower and eventually all the things I own I'm hoping should belong to a small corner of my home and if not only the the first layer of, of shelving uh, because that's really the area that you can reach that's really the area that you see anyways. The final topic that I'd like to discuss today is the connection between identity and travel. The number one question that I'm asked is how do you overcome travel anxiety? Here in Canada, we've heard so many stories of really long lineups at the airport, people who are unable to get their passports. We hear about, um, not so much anymore, but sometimes people get scared of, what if I test positive or get sick while I'm overseas, what will I do? My advice truly, which has been a focus of mine throughout this experience, has been going back to 
the purpose of my decision. What is it that I've decided to do and what does that mean in my life? For me, career has always been one of the fundamental pillars in my life. It's something that I've always cared about. It's something that I really wanted to build intentionally. Before 2020, I was very comfortable in where I was in my career. I was in a position where I was regular full time. I enjoyed it. It was in the field in which I've studied. That was on the one hand. And then on the other hand, during my private time, evenings and weekends, I was leading large event teams, which I really loved. I did it for more than 15 years and I was in leadership positions for around 10 years, at least 10 years in that organization. And really, I grew up with the folks that I worked with because it was folks that I worked alongside with in entry level roles. And then we spent time together and it led to supervisory and management positions and they were the basis of my social network. And all of a sudden, because we weren't able to see each other in person, all of that changed. So financially and then socially, everything got cut off. So for me, a big part of this move is allowing myself to be the person I want to be. It's not about going back and saying, let's rebuild what I have. I left that position. That was intentional. Could I go back? Who knows but that's not the point the point is to move forward with where i want to go and so the question about how do you deal with travel anxiety of course i have my own fears about travel i don't want to get sick any more than anyone else does i don't want to wait in long lines i don't want to be in inconvenienced any more than anyone else does but what's my intention and purpose my intention is to be with amit my intention is to live a life, continue moving forward with our life, as opposed to being here at home, sheltered at a time where there's no more sheltering in place in Canada, sheltered here awaiting for things to change. And so how do I personally overcome travel anxiety? I go back to my why. Why am I doing this? Because I wanna be with Amit, because I want to move forward with my life because career requires change and everything I've seen in terms of success and growth, it does require a little bit of fear. Perhaps if you're not a little bit concerned or a little bit wary, if you're not really researching where you're leading, perhaps you're kind of staying in the same spot you were before and that's not what I want. So for me, when it comes to travel and identity, travel doesn't define me but it's something that makes me happy. It's something that makes me curious and it's something where it inspires me to do other things. And so, am I willing to travel? Absolutely. Do I need to tell myself it's gonna be okay? Absolutely. Do I know the path in which we're going even though I have some idea? Of course not, nobody could. So it's 18 weeks until I leave Canada. And the lesson that I learned this week is to truly enjoy all of the local delicious things. I'm the founder of Chatty Bear Magazine. Of course, I care about food and travel. But the reason why this is a lesson learned today is I suppose to remove that guilt and to know that it's good to enjoy the local things. Can you get them overseas? Not always. If you can get them, does it taste the same? Not necessarily. Have you ever tried a Kit Kat that was manufactured in Canada as opposed to a Kit Kat that was manufactured in the States? Very, very different, my friends. And so, quick story for you. I was walking down Robson Street towards Robson and Burrard. I had just finished a lovely meal with a good friend of mine, spent some good time, caught up, and I was on my way home. And as you're walking in that area, you can distinctly smell that really gorgeous, lush, buttery, sugary scent that's magical. It's candy, it's chocolate, it's beautiful. So walking down the street and I had this moment, they sell really beautiful um, car caramel apples. But of course, they're not just caramel apples, they're beautiful, decadent caramel apples with different varieties. And so I had this moment of, well, I just had dinner, but what should I do? I should just keep walking. But also, 
I'm only going to be in the city for another 18 weeks. Why would I just completely ignore obviously something that lights me up that makes me want to try. And so I did stop in, no regrets. Got a lovely caramel apple with some almonds and it was a lovely top off to the evening. So lesson learned, enjoy the local delicacies. The magic is that you know what those are, you know where to get them. And so enjoy them while you can. Thank you so much for watching. It's 18 weeks until I leave Canada, Amit leaves India, and we're reunited in Dubai. Please do leave your comments and questions below. Subscribe. We look forward to connecting and we'll see you in the next video.